Hello learners, hope that you are keeping well. Uh, today we are looking at a core industrial region under economic geography, as indicated here, and we're looking at the Southwestern Cape core industrial region, and we're using or basing it on the 2021 examination guidelines. Okay, now let's look at it. In one of my previous YouTube videos, uh, we covered the Gauteng PWV uh, core industrial region, and that was as stipulated in the 2020 uh, examination guidelines, or rather the 2017, that continued to 2020, okay? And that again is part of the 2021 uh, guidelines, okay? And the other core industrial region is the Southwestern Cape, okay? Now, learners, I must emphasize this and uh, that this Southwestern Cape will apply for the 2021 prelim, the final and the 2022 June exams. And after that, at the end of 2022, uh, November exams, obviously it will change. So, but on the other hand, I know you guys are intelligent. You're not going to write the 2022 November exams. You are just gonna write the prelim and the final and get top marks, okay? Because you guys are brilliant. All right, so, but that's a point that I need to make known. Okay, so what are we gonna look at here? As we looked at the PWV, we're gonna look at the location, uh, factors influencing location. Okay, the prescribed industrial area here is the Southwestern Cape. The main industrial activities of the Southwestern Cape, factors favoring and hindering this core industrial region, Southwestern Cape, economic and social impacts, okay? And instead of a case study, we'll look at a paper down here, but please note, you have to do case studies as your teachers give you in class. It gives you an idea of the uh, area, etc. Okay, now let's get going. So where is the Southwestern Cape located. Okay, you know you've done, you need to have a brief understanding of the four core industrial regions. And we'll notice that the Southwestern Cape is actually located, obviously, in the Western Cape. Okay, giving you a more better idea, you'll notice it covers this area. And look at it already, uh, learners, you can see Cape Town down here. And what does it tell you? Okay, that it has a harbor. And as we move along this way, we'll notice Sardana Bay. Okay, and that also has a deep port, or deep water harbor. You notice also the well-connected area, eh? All these N1, N7, N2 linking up this area. Already you're building in your mind uh, the significance of having a big core industrial region in this area of the Southwestern Cape or in the province of Western Cape. It's laid out and already I'm giving you little hints of factors favoring this area. Okay, now, you would have done general things about core industrial areas in my last presentation on core industrial regions in 2020. So I'm not gonna repeat myself. You can always watch that video. But remember, it's PWV now, okay? It's not the Durban Pine Town, not the PEU today, but the Southwestern Cape. So in my other video, I may have covered another region besides the PWV. Now you focus on the PWV, and the Southwestern Cape for your prelim and your final exam. And I know you're gonna nail it. Okay, so let's go on. 
This is the third largest coal industrial region in South Africa after PWV number one, or Gauteng, and then the Durban Pine Town, and then we have the Southwestern Cape. So it's a big contributor in terms of capital, etc., to South Africa. Okay. Now let's look at factors favoring this place. Okay. Uh, Number one, I'd love to be on top of this mountain. Beautiful for tourism, eh? All right, the harbor at Cape Town, okay? That already you can see uh, cheaper transport, imports, exports, etc. okay? And the deep water port at Saldana Bay. All right, brilliant, big ships can come in to this deep water port. It's not very far away. All right, and there's beautiful roads linking Saldana Bay to Cape Town. So those two things are important in determining the location. The Mediterranean climate, which brings in a lot of fruit. Okay, uh, one of the big things is grapes, which will produce wine. We have one of the top selling wine countries in the world. I hope you don't drink wine. It's not good for your health, but it brings in a lot of stuff, various type of fruit, etc. from this climate. Beautiful for locating here. All right, market for goods due to a highly urbanized population, bigger earnings, etc. Okay, so there's a large market already for goods in the area. Availability of skilled, semi-skilled and unskilled labor. We need people to do the job. Okay, and you can't set yourself in the middle of a desert where there's no one. All right, if you want to make a core industrial region, so it's availability of this. Another availability is the fishing industry. Okay, we have a lot of fishing happening in this area. The climate is suitable in this area. The colors, uh, current, etc., brings in beautiful fishing in this area, especially more. I'm using the wrong current, but more on this west southwest etc that brings in beautiful uh fishing in this area so some of the factors that brings in uh of makes this place a favorable location uh this tourism etc as you can see from the picture here okay that also can encourage this area. The harbor down here as shown down in, in the picture can also encourage lots of things, okay? Main industries in the area, all right? Now, most of the, um, it's mostly labor intensive. I'm gonna emphasize light industries in this area. And we talk about raw materials, etc. later, and you'll notice why it's light. So a lot of light industries, the main ones is like clothing and footwear, all right, cotton, etc., grows in this area, okay? Food processing because of the climate, we use wine, juices, all come from this area, okay? Fish canning and packaging. Fishing is brilliant in this area, okay? So fish canning and packaging can happen here. Yeah, you can see the... The young ladies, I'm old, so they are young ladies, busy cutting up the fish and packaging them, okay? Uh, you'll notice here is all the textiles, etc. that's found here, the materials, clothing, ship repairs because of the harbor, all right? That's another industrial activity, fixing up ships that are coming in, okay? Making them seaworthy. The petrol refinery at Milneton, Okay, that's another major activity here. And link industries, all right, that we have like printing, packaging, making of the packaging that these young ladies could use to pack the fish in. Okay, so these are some of the major transport uh, or rather industrial activities that are found in this area, okay? factors favoring and some of them are going to overlap with the factors determining the location the harbor as you can see here okay gives direct access 
to export market and imported items to be processed. So you can send it out easily and cheaper to other places or other countries. You can bring in items that you need to process, okay, from other countries. So it creates, a, creates a, generally creates a link to the rest of the world's markets and it's along major transport routes because from Cape Town, you can go to uh, the, the West, like the United States, to the East, uh, the Indian subcontinent, etc. So it, it's an ideal thing that favors it here. Okay, raw materials, okay, like your fruit that can be found here, your dairy, your fish, those are raw materials that can be processed, okay, like citrus, deciduous fruits, grapes, wheat, vegetables, dairy, fish, a variety of these may not be mineral orientated, but they're also raw materials that can be used to produce and process stuff. The Agulhas Bank that's found in this area has a beautiful fishing opportunities, great fishing potential, all right, that is used here, okay. Good farming systems, highly commercialized, etc., And this contributes most to the agricultural system in this area. All right, and one of the big contributors in South Africa. Okay, that's what also favors exports. I'm using some like your Fane Boss, and that's exported unique to the South or the Western Cape. All right, Roy Boss tea, which they say is very healthy. Eh? All right, or your wines, etc. So good exports from the area. Strong wool, meat. Dairy industries favor this area due to the climate, etc. Well developed infrastructure, example transport routes. I showed you in that little picture here or map. Look at the transport routes for sending out goods and from the harbor outwards. Brilliant. All right. Okay, and the area is more than 80% urbanized. We have a large market. Okay, large labor supply. Lots of skilled labor also because of this area would favor it. And there is dry dock facilities for ship repairs. You can see it here. All right, which also favors the area. And as I mentioned, skilled, semi-skilled and unskilled labor available. Labor is always important for success of any industry. Large local market due to large population. So a significant number of, of, of amount of goods processed are sold immediately. And that's very healthy learners because if you sell to your immediate area, it cuts down transport costs, et cetera. And you're already making a, a sum of money Okay, and it makes it easier for you in terms of money made and then you export or send to other areas. The natural environment attracts a lot of tourism, like Table Mountain, beautiful place, all right, uh, that is found in this area that also attracts. Now, you may see just the mountain tourists coming in. Wouldn't it be a larger market? Wouldn't there be then more production? Okay, a variety of production. So that will be a factor favoring also. But there must be factors hindering industrial development. One of the things is that it is far from the coal mines. Right? All the coal mines are more north. Okay, as you've done with the PWV area. All right, you notice coal mines are there. And what does it do? It makes electricity expensive. And learners, without electricity to create production in, in those industries, etc., is practically impossible. So, uh, fortunately, they have the Kuhlberg nuclear power plant. They're heavily reliant on that, eh? All right. This is the Kuhlberg plant that supplies uh, power to the area. Okay. And then the Palmit 
hydroelectric plant, all right? It's a water source for storage, and it also uses turbines to generate electricity, okay? So unfortunately, you have to spend more in order to get your electricity. The other types of green energy production is not totally reliable, okay? And it's also expensive, but it's being looked into as alternate sources. Okay, but for Kuberg and Palmit, they then managed to bring in electricity. So electricity is relatively expensive there. High cost to major markets in South Africa. If you look at the big markets like Gauteng, which is the largest the economic powerhouse in South Africa, <clears throat> and what happens here, it's a distance away from Cape Town. All right, a huge distance, well over 1,800 kilometers or so, depending on which route you take, all right? So it's far away. So big markets in South Africa, you have to transport your goods, which makes it more expensive. Transport costs are huge, okay? Water shortages, okay, in the area, especially during the summer period, and sometimes when that goes into the winter period, we have heavy drought situations as we had recently a few years ago. And it's, it's serious in the area, dams dry out. So we do have a water challenge in this area. And therefore, we, the reliance again is on that water, palm to water pump service scheme, which supplements water to the area. Okay, that helps. It also generates hydroelectric power, but it also brings in some water. But water is a challenge, especially with prolonged droughts, not just a seasonal drought in, in summer, but sometimes it goes into winter and there's a huge problem. Industrial sites uh, are limited here. Okay, therefore it is expensive to get into a site you pay more not such a major factor as the others, but it is a factor. And of course, no major minerals, okay, like iron ore, etc. So it limits the industries in the area. Okay, that is why you find that there's a lot of light industries, not those heavy industries like your iron and steel, uh, industries, etc., because there's not many, uh, no major minerals as such in this area. And when you did in my previous lesson of talking about overall South Africa and the economic and, and mining, you, you would see a map there. If you go to my previous lesson on that mining, uh, you'll notice that there's hardly, there's nothing in terms of minerals in the Western Cape Gold or whatever doesn't really exist there. Okay, so that's a factor hindering and we have light industries in the area. Okay, then social impacts of this development here. Okay, and you'll notice that available because of all these industries, etc the availability of employment opportunities happens here. It's in all sectors, example, the farming, building of infrastructure development, tourism. So it's good for the people, they get employed. All right, remember employment is a social and an economic factor, all right? The earning potential increases, just not getting employed, but because of variety of employment opportunities, and of course, opportunities to get skills, etc., increases the earning, the salaries even can increase. So that's a good thing, all right? And in that way, your poverty is reduced through this employment. Okay, remember poverty can be when you're earning a very low salary or not working. Now you can release poverty. Uh, accessibility to services and facilities such as education, health, the area is developing. More of these facilities are developing. You understand whether it's uh, 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 tertiary institutions, okay, it's uh, uh, schools, high schools, etc. The number is increasing. Okay, secondly, uh, because of earning potential, you can afford to actually get these facilities, 
All right. I just use education and health. It could be recreation. Okay. Various factors that you can have in this area. And of course, with all that, it improves the standard of living. Okay, this can apply to many areas. If I take the PWV, it will be more or less the same factors in terms of the social impacts. Okay, you can see it here how developed the area is. I just took a piece of it, all right, to show you the development infrastructure, uh, housing, etc. Okay, the basic needs all are supplied. Economic impacts, all right, the money. Of course, it creates employment again. More people earning results in a larger market for goods. The domestic market is big. More people work, more people want to buy, more production. It promotes the development of new and existing infrastructure, okay? So what actually happens here is that new infrastructure is coming out, whether it's transport, uh, whether it's uh, power lines, you understand, communication networks, more and more come out, which makes the area more developed, which makes the area more attractive, all right? And good infrastructure helps for business. It provides access to resources, especially your transport, etc. Okay, you're easier to assess resources within or from other areas or to distribute. Okay, efficient transport networks move raw materials and finished goods. And you notice I showed you that little map about the different transport networks within the area linking up to other areas. Okay, so that also brings it in also to send out, okay? Promotes domestic and international trade because the area is so suitable. The area is so successful, all right? We now have more people uh, trading with the area because of the products being produced, investments happening in the area, all right? Whether it's domestic people buying, goods moving to Gauteng, Durban, although the, the, the transport is a distance to travel, all right, but it's bringing in, it contributes significantly to the GDP of South Africa, okay, because of the large, it's the third largest area, so it brings in a lot of money, all right, for the country via, uh, international trade, etc., where goods are sold overseas, okay, bringing in lots of money, all right, in terms of that, all right, and it promotes investment in RSA because it's so well established and it has beautiful infrastructure. Uh, overseas countries, uh, countries that come in, they want to invest in this area because it's a beautiful business opportunity. So there's a lot of economic impacts that comes in. All right, you can see the employment here. You can see the offshore jobs that people are doing. You understand with the oil and gas, etc., around the area. Okay, the environmental impacts, I know it's not shown in the exam guideline, but I felt it was necessary to bring it in. Okay, uh, due to the heating from factories and boats, the sea experiences thermal pollution increases in temperature. And this is not a good factor because it's already damaging the natural habitats. It reduces the fish, etc. Okay, uh, industries such as textile industries, pollute rivers, okay? Soil and vegetation and natural habitats are affected due to development because as the area uh, gets more investment, greater markets, bigger production, you have to build more. And as you build more, you remove vegetation, which then is not good because then the soil is damaged, the vegetation is removed, natural habitats that rely on the vegetation are in trouble, okay? But one point is pollution 
is relatively less compared to the other core industrial regions due to the large amount of light industries. You know, light industries don't pollute as much as heavy industries. Okay. Now, I took a DBE pass paper. Uh, it was from the years before. Now, it's a simple one, but it gives you some direction also. Okay. Uh, regarding this, it doesn't have a paragraph question, but gives you an idea of how to interpret information. So it says here, Western Cape exports, generally dealing with the Western Cape with a little focus on the Southwestern Cape. So it says Western Cape exports, and it lists quite a few things here, refined petroleum, citrus fruit, and it gives you amounts for each little one, South African rands. Okay, apples, and talks about iron and steel, fruit juice, dried fruit, tobacco, you understand, engine parts. So it gives you an idea of what the A Western Cape actually exports. Okay, let's look at some of the questions on this. Figure 3.5 showing statistics referred to it relating to the Western Cape export uh, products. Name one product in figure 3.5 uh, representing a primary and secondary economic activities. All right, so when we look at this primary, Remember, extracting or using the soil for farming. Okay, it will be things like apples and pears, grapes, they're not being processed yet, citrus. Okay, those are the ones that are your primary. So if you look at it here, citrus, apples and pears, grapes, tobacco, those are the ones that's listed there. So this question I'm using, as I say, it's, it's a relatively simple question, okay? Uh, of course, you could get paragraph questions, etc., on this, uh, but you still have to use the source and that picks up again that these questions can maybe be simple, but they can be every time you get a little resource, look for information on the resource. And something you know, on many occasions you'll find that some of the answers are taken directly from the resource. And then it says the secondary. And if you look at the secondary, things that have been processed like petroleum, your wine, your iron and steel that has been processed from iron ore. And look at there they are. Can you see it? Can you see it? All right. Your wine, there's a day. So it's processed. And of course, you got one mark each. Which primary product shows an increase in value after it has been processed? Now, please note, these ones will now come out as one mark. All right, one times one, one mark. So when we look at this and we go to it, we know grapes makes wine. Okay, that's all you need to know. Okay, you don't need to know how it tastes. It's not for you. Okay, so grapes make wine. So that's your answer. Grapes, the primary product that has been increased in value because it was 6 billion. Now when wine is made, it's making 8.6 billion. Okay, let's go to the next question. Calculate the total revenue from export of fresh fruit in the Western Cape. You get questions like this, uh, learners, where you have to calculate and you have to identify things. Like sometimes just calculate the primary uh, uh, activities, what it contributes or the secondary activities. Now you already learned about the Western Cape and the fruit, etc. So how do we work this question out? We look at all the and I've go back to fresh fruit. We look at citrus, 8.6 billion, apples and pears, uh, 6 billion, which is 14.6, and grapes, which is 6 billion. And if we add that, it's 20.6 billion. Okay, there's nothing more here because fruit juice is processed, dried fruit and nuts, 
it's processed, it was fruit and nuts, now it's dried. You understand? So when I look at this answer, it's 20.6 billion. Now, let me ask a question here, learners. Why not tobacco as one? And if I look at the question, it talks about fresh fruit. Tobacco is not part of it. Okay, next question. Why is the food processing such a major industry in Southwestern Cape region? Why is it a main industry? All right, or one of the major industries. And can you see how you need to use your knowledge of the Southwestern Cape in order to answer this. So it's not gonna come out straight. It's gonna be you applying the information. Can you see it? Fruit is the main raw material used in the food processing. And you know, one of the big things about the Southwestern Cape and the Mediterranean climate is growing of fruit. Can you see it? That's how it can be asked. Climate is suitable for grapes uh, growing, making of wine, which is big. Variety of fruit is suitable to be grown in this area, the climate. Labor force available for food farming, if the, which requires manual labor. Remember we said labor orientated, all right, light industries. Can you see how we're using that information now and applying it to uh, food processing? And that's how you can get tested, okay? It's not just general information that you learn. Now you're taking that information you learned and applying it here. And as exams go, whether it's a prelim, final, you have to apply information in many cases to different resources or scenarios, All right? And there's a lack of minerals, thus the Western Cape relies on fruit as a raw material. Now, can you see all these points, uh, learners, have been covered in your notes. You just made it specific to the question. Last question. All right. Discuss two factors that support exports of products from the Western Cape. Just don't ask you factors favoring. Can you see? It changes the, the, the examiner has brought in an application question, all right? But it's same, fact is favoring, but it's now related to the exporting of products. You've learned the fact is favoring. Now look at this. Harbor facilities and harbor infrastructure to export to global markets. Can you see what we've done here? What is done here by the examiners? What they did was, they brought in the factors favoring, but you had to relate it to exports. So one of the things you knew already, harbor and harbor infrastructure, the storage facilities, etc., allow for exports to global markets. High efficient container shipping facility accessible to the harbor. Refrigerated containers transporting of fruit overseas. Cape Town International Airport provides links to major economies. Top quality products produced for export because the climate allows it to actually be top quality. So it's better to export. It's a factor that favors the climate. Increase in demand for these products in the Northern Hemisphere. Okay, I know maybe, but how do I expect to know that? Of course, there'll be optionals answers you understand that needs to be accepted that's also reality okay but by this stage you have got more than your two because it's two factors times two marks each okay so that's how you get it all right uh, most industries are established are uh, and mechanized road and laid uh, rail links improve transportation links to the rest of south africa okay these are other points that will come in. Obviously, your first ones are the major ones in any memo. You understand? And then the other factors follow. Please remember that your main ones are always the first ones on your memos. Okay, but you can see again, learners, what you had to do here was apply your information. Well, I hope that you have a good understanding of the Southwestern Cape. 
all right, which is part of your prescribed 2021 uh, core industrial region. All the best learners. Goodbye.